Good morning, evening, afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending our second day of our 2021 Figure C Virtual Vendor Summit. Uh, hope you enjoyed yesterday's talks. They're all up on YouTube, and we're going to be streaming again on YouTube today. So just like yesterday, feel free to ask questions of our speakers during the talks. You can use the Q&A feature if you're on the Zoom webinar. You can also ask questions uh, in various chat platforms. You can do so on our YouTube stream. You can do so on our on the Dev Summit channel on FNet IRC or on FreeBSD Slack, as well as the Dev Summit channel and FreeBSD's Discord. Please prefix your questions with Q colon so that we can recognize them and help forward them on to our speakers. So with that, our first speaker for today is Arka from Dell, who's going to be talking about uh, open channel SSDs. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Arka, if you're ready to go. Yeah, John. OK, I'll let you get your screen sharing set up. I hope it is visible. Yep, it looks good here. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, hi everyone. Uh, myself, Orko, and uh, I. I've been working with uh, Dell EMC last two and a half years, and out of that, I joined the Isolon project last year. So our work goes back to to last year, 2020, when we are in the middle of a lockdown and we had just uh, came to know that we will be assigned to Isolon and Isolon is based on FreeBSD and we had to learn FreeBSD. And me, myself and Amit, we both have been, uh, we both worked uh, for, a, for a while for a, one of the major SSD vendors. So we have some exposure to flash translation layer and SSD inner workings. Therefore, we thought, uh, how to one of the best way to get into FreeBSD would be to directly delve into one of the uh, this uh, this light NVM which is implemented in Linux and we decided to implement it in FreeBSD right so that's all this uh, work is all about and uh, with that said uh, let's start so I won't be going uh, in the detail of the background and. Uh, all, all those things, some, some of the internal details, because some of the details are covered in the bibliography that I have added. And uh, also we have submitted a journal article where uh, many of the finer details are covered, right? So this talk would be more about uh, what all changes we have done to this in order to plug this open light NVM into FreeBSD. And uh, we share our, uh, what all the things we used uh, for this, uh, how we uh, make the, uh, how we were able to implement this and uh, our uh, learning through the process, right? So here is one brief uh, intro, uh, brief uh, comparison of a traditional SSD and an open channel SSD. So in the left hand side, what we see here in the traditional SSD, which uh, will uh, present a block interface, which will uh, have a logical block address or LPA to the host. And uh, let's talk about if we talk about NVMe, which is the host con uh, controller interface for uh, flash based SSDs. And uh, internally, SSD will have the functionalities uh, which have been shown in gray, which are data placement and media management, L2P, which is logical to physical management, and IO scheduling and all, right? So, Open Channel SSD does divides this and some of the responsibilities are placed in the host as seen in the right hand side. So the data placement and the L2P table, uh, map management and uh, scheduling of the IOs and some of the NAND management stuff are dispatched to the host and some of the low level NAND management like uh, error detection and recovery and uh, uh, some of the where leveling related information are still uh, maintained in OCSSD. So one fundamental difference between OCSSD and earlier MTD devices is that MTD devices typically are raw NAND. In this case, it is open channel SSD is not just raw NAND. It still has a controller. Obviously the controller capabilities need not be that much of a traditional SSD because the 
responsibilities are less, so computing resources are also less. For those who are uh, familiar with the NVMe, would recognize that this is the NVMe submission queue structure, which is a 64 byte. And uh, OCSSD made some ex uh, extension here, and two extension would be uh, for let's consider for read write commands. The command divert zero and command divert ten typically for traditional NVMe command it. Uh, it, it, it is an integer and it denotes uh, 64 bytes, 64 bit uh, LBA and start LBA of the operation. And uh, in this case, this won't, be, uh, this won't be just an LBA. Instead, it would point to a host memory, host memory in DMS space. And that host memory would contain a list of PPA, even though OCSSD specification is it uh, they name it as LBA list, but it is actually list of PPA, which is nothing but the uh, addresses in uh, physical land. So it, PPA stands for uh, physical page address, right? So uh, as I mentioned in the article also, that NAND is uh, divided in uh, channels, and then further it is further divided into uh, dies and uh, planes, block, page, and so on. So, so PPA is in physical space. And since we are exposing the NAND geometry here, therefore the name open channel, right? So host is able to see the uh, multiple channel and multiple dies and so on. And therefore host is able to uh, exploit the parallelism there, right? To, there are a few more commands that OCSSD specification adds out of the out of those commands these two major commands are geometry which expose the internal nand geometry like how many uh, groups or channels how many uh, dies how many page how many uh, blocks how many pages and so on and one thing is that that different nand vendors would have their uh, different geometries right so OCSSD specification, it provides some sort of uniform uh, way to describe the NAND geometry, right? So that is the geometry command. And another uh, get log page identifier is added is that chunk information, which is basically, chunk means basically the block, flash block, which is basically the erase unit. Uh, this chunk information helps, uh, it kind of useful for debugging that as well as monitoring also. We basically use this uh, particular uh, log identifier for our debugging purpose. So our uh, dev setup has been on KMU, and we never had uh, we never had a chance to work on a open channel SSD. So we used this uh, emulated setup. So our host is basically a Fedora, and there uh, we use the open channel SSD enabled uh, KMU. So here is the KMU command to create an emula emulated open channel SSD. So what we see here on the uh, upper slide uh, that, that uh, this diagram is various uh, parameters for our uh, open channel SSD. So as we can see here, the number of groups, chunks, and all right, number of parallel unit, these are uh, shown here. So this terminology definitely, it is for those who are aware, on, uh, aware of uh, flash internals, this terminology seems a little bit different. The reason again is that open channel SSD provides uh, a uniform uh, term inter interface and that includes a uniform, uh, uniform terminologies too. So in this case, uh, in the below diagram, what we can see here, we are creating a sample OCSSD image, and we are having two groups, which means two channels, and channels are something where the data can like can flow parallelly, right? Two channels, basically two uh, two separate uh, separate media for data to the actual NAND and the flash controller. So in our case, it is the cut down flash controller that I discussed earlier, right? So we have two channels and each channel we have connected four PUs and each PU 
is having 60 blocks or chunks. Now, so that makes our total number of chunks 480. So when we, we go further for the slides, we'll have uh, when where we dump our chunk information, we'll see this count. So this, has, uh, this is how we start the FreeBSD uh, guest. And FreeBSD guest, we add this OCSSD uh, sample as a secondary drive. And we also, uh, we also uh, start it in GDB stub for uh, debugging. And we also have enabled the 4321 for uh, telnet connection, which is again, we use for debugging. And there are the changes in the make file and uh, where we add the our source and header files. So as you can see, so we largely kept the file names and all those things similar to light and VM. However, uh, definitely there are some changes has been done, which I would cover later. So this is pretty much it in terms of uh, source modification, right? So our work is divides in two modules. One is light and uh, light and VM, which is the interface to the which is the interface to the existing NVMe driver, because as I mentioned earlier, that OCSSD extends the OCSSD extend the NVMe uh, NVMe interface. So therefore, we need to incorporate those changes. And then another module we have that is the that will expose a Geom interface, and that will sit at the same level as NVD. So going forward, we'll show how we are, we configure it. And that will expose the disk interface to plug in it with Geom. And the other component is the PBLK where uh, we implement our FTL logic. So this is the depiction of the, what I said in the uh, previous slide. So as we can see the NVM core is basically the, module, which is kind of a broker between the, of our FTL and the underlying NVMe. And NVMe is also augmented by the some modification which is needed for OCSSD. And all the communication, this uh, our NVMe core with PBLK and uh, light NVM is done via BIO, right? So that is where it largely different from the Linux implementation, because in case of Linux, uh, we have this uh, block MQ and block MQ kind of, uh, we for each BIO, we they have this back and forth BIO passing to block MQ to their, uh, their FTL. But in our case, it is largely unidirectional flow, right? So one quick example would be uh, we have a host side cache, so we don't uh, directly write to the flash. So suppose we have, uh, and we also have a writer thread that picks up the data from the cache and flush to the NAND and update the L2P map. Now let's say we receive uh, read commands and in such that that's part of the read is in cache and part of the read is in uh, NAND. So in this case, our approach is creating a creating a child BIOS, and uh, the and we complete the and for for uh, data to be read from the cache, it is simply a mem copy operation. But however, for data to be read from the NAND, we need to pass it down to the underlying device through NVMe, and we need to wait for the completion. And once the data is ready, then only you can complete the BIO. So the idea is pretty much the same how NVMe or any other module for that matter, splits up BIO and completes uh, the BIO once all the child, all the children are completed, right? So this is what, uh, this is the new CCTL we introduced to use our NVM core instead of NVD. So we need to enable this uh, before we uh, could uh, create, uh, before we could proceed with our solution. And in the below diagram, we have an example of creating a target. And as you can see, the underlying minus T option we are giving is the PBLK. That is basically the type of FTL we are creating. So if there are other, our FTL is similar to light NVM, which is a very straightforward uh, 
POC kind of FTL. So, so if we decide to plan to use some custom FTL with some extra handling, so we could definitely do that. And it is more like a pluggable module. And once you create the target, so that FTL would be uh, would be the one which should do the a logical to physical mapping and other responsibilities. The last two parameters minus B and minus C are basically the number of PUs, right? So remember in our sample configuration, we had created two channels or two groups, each connected with four PUs. Therefore, we have seven, uh, sorry, eight PUs total, uh, starting from index zero to seven. So out of that, we are carving out a target which consists of four PUs, zero to three. So one thing to note here is even in this particular target, we will not be able to uh, exploit the channel parallelism because all the PUs are sitting on the same channel or same group. However, we would be definitely able to uh, use the PU interleaving. So once the data is being, once a flash command is being processed inside the PU, we can definitely uh, move the data back and forth to another PU and so on. So this is just an example, right? So if you create a target with all uh, P, all PUs 0 to 7, obviously you would be able to have the utilize the parallel parallelism out of the channel. Conversely, let's say if we create the target in such a way that we have four channels and uh, let's say each channel is having two PUs. In that case, also it in that case, PU01 would be on channel zero, PU23 uh, would be on channel one. In that case, also you'll have you'll be able to utilize the channel parallelism. So this is just for example. Uh, this is the internal striping that we do. And uh, the top. In the top left corner, what do you see the line layout? So line is basically we take we take chunk from uh, from each PU and create a line for the to have this striping. Uh, so remember we created the target with four PUs and e each PU was having sixty blocks or sixty chunks. So if we see here. The line zero consists of PU zero, uh, the chunk zero of PU zero, chunk zero of PU one, chunk zero of PU two, and so on, and uh, chunk zero of PU three. So for uh, we mark them in in a flat incremental manner for our uh, understanding, but they are basically PU zeros. On the left hand side, this is basically the internal of a single line. Okay. And this is relative to each line here, right? So if you remember the NAND configuration we had, each chunk was having 4K blocks. And uh, since we are creating a line out of four chunks, so we have total 16K sectors. I should not say blocks, 16K sectors. Each sector here is 4K. Now, the striping is done such a way that in our case also we have the optimal rise size eight. So it is done such a way that we could uh, we could divide the data such that when so let's say PU zero we are writing eight sectors at the same times we could send the data for PU one and you can send the write command for PU one and once this data data has been sent to PU one and it is internally committing to its own NAND. Similarly, we could send the data to PU2 and so on, right? And we have our, our FTL algorithm has some few extra, uh, special usage for certain areas. That is the first sector, we call it S meta. And the purpose would be discussed later. And the last 40 sectors, 40, that, that 40 is depending on the how many number of sectors are here is used for the P2L map. So what is the purpose of these two metadata? And we are also we are also seeing here L2P map, right? So as we know that uh, as part of flash translation, we need to do a logical to physical mapping. So host side address space, which is the logical address space is mapped to the 
NAND site physical address space. So this data structure here, L2P map, resides on the host memory. And the LBA points to the corresponding PPA where this LBA is written. Also, we can see one orange line, which is pointing from the PPA back to the LBA. So why it is needed? This is needed for the recovery that which we'll cover later. And high density NAND also provides an extra restriction that we cannot, we have to write the sequentially inside a block or inside a chunk. So for example, I cannot, I can only write this direction inside a chunk. But what we are choosing to do, do instead is that we are writing this one and this one like that and so on, right? So in our case, we are highlighting a scenario where LBS zero is written to this sector 32. Sector 32 is relative to the entire line. But if you see the sector 32 actual physical address would be group zero, PU zero, chunk zero and sector eight. Similarly, sector one is located at 74. So which is group zero, PU one, chunk zero and sector 18, right? This L2P map is the size of the total, uh, the size of the logical address space of the target or LBA, the max LBA would be the capacity. And the P2L, P2L is the reverse mapping to the L2P. So what it will have is it will have zero to 16, 16K. So I'm for our illustration purpose, I'm just highlighting here this uh, 32 and 74. So PPA sector number 32 is pointing to LBA zero. So therefore it is containing zero and similarly 74 is one, therefore it is one. So basically you can say this P2L is redundant. The data here is redundant to the actual data. What we have in the metadata area of each sector. Now the question is why, why we need that? That is because uh, to basically to uh, speed up the recovery process. If we did not have this P2L map, otherwise we have to scan all the sectors for the metadata and we have to update, update our L2P map. So to save time, we are doing this, but in it is also possible when you shut down the device, uh, you may not be able to uh, complete this, close this line, right? So you may be somewhere in the between. In that case, we cannot write P2L. So we have to resort to this sector scanning. Some of the more, so we use the NVMe CLI from the ports, CCUTILS CC NVMe CLI, and we added one extra functionality that uh, chunk information log page that I was talking earlier. And you can see the total number of chunk is 480 because that's how we configured our uh, OCSS devices. And it uh, dumps few data that is useful for debugging, like the start LV of the chunk. And LBA here is a little confusing. So you can you uh, can uh, interpret as start sectors because LBA we typically refer for the host, uh, for the LBA address that host refers to, right? Right pointer is the, where is the current write is being done? So I said that uh, write will be sequentially inside a chunk, right? And also I must say here that this one line is for one chunk. It is not for the stripe line, right? And we, it also shows the uh, state so currently there is nothing, and uh, if it is completed, it will be closed. The WLI is basically the erase count, the number of times this chunk is erased, which we'll use for uh, wire leveling. Uh, this is our sample uh, test uh, script. So we use FIO for to uh, verify our uh, read and write. So this is where uh, we are writing around uh, 64 MB of data at this offset, uh, 128K offset, okay? And once we write, so 128K offset, this is in physical, uh, this is not in physical address space, this is in logical address space, right? And this 128, uh, this 64 MB data, once it is written to the OCS in NAND, obviously it will affect the chunk log information that we have seen earlier. So I have attached the chunk log here. I have attached the chunk log here. So if you see that uh, what happens after running 64 MB, writing 64 MB data, and you can see the, how this uh, chunk number 060, 120 and 180 change, because that is what our, that is what uh, forms the line zero, right? 
and the line one consists of 161, 121, and so on. L2P recovery is basically the procedure once uh, you uh, shut down, once you do some uh, right and then shut down, maybe normal shutdown or abrupt shutdown. But for to have further, uh, to have the OCSSD operational and correctly access data, you need to rebuild the L2P map. Now, L2P map is basically is residing on the memory and uh, to get the L2P map, we we refer to the S meta. So remember, I said that in the beginning of the line, we stored S meta. So S meta is nothing but the sequence number, right? And why the sequence number is needed over the time, you would receive uh, overwrite fr from the host, right? For the same LBA, right? And the when we allocate a line for uh, of, to accommodate incoming writes, we assign the sequence number, which is a monotonically increasing uh, integer. So higher is the sequence number denote the uh, latest data, which is containing the LP, right? So in the boot up process, after the first, after the first boot up, after the first, uh, the first uh, uh, shutdown, when we boot up, basically the second time when the device is coming up, what we do is we uh, create a sorted list based on the sequence number and uh, we start scanning. We first attempt to scan the P2L which is the last uh, 40 or so sectors, depending on uh, how, how big is the, how is the striping of the NAND. And uh, we load the, from the P2L map, we construct the L2P map. So by in case the P2L is failed for some reason, reading the P2L area is failed for some reason or uh, scanning the sectors. So what we do is uh, for, we scan the sectors and we create the L2P map. So that is the reason we maintain a redundant information. Or it is also possible the line was not closed. So in that case, you will not have a P uh, P2L map. So you have to scan the uh, sectors, right? So we had a plan to uh, add one more uh, functionality in the specification that th th this sector scan, right? Sector, we are scanning the meta area of the sector. We are not reading the entire sector uh, 4K data. So we proposed, uh, we didn't propose it, but we had an idea of proposing that we have a, a way to uh, access only the meta area because based on our experience, typically NAND will provide such functionality that you just access the meta area, thus speeding up the recovery process, right? So these are the, these are the bibliography that we, uh, refer for our work and we ha I have attached a small video that you can download and uh, take a look at when when you get the slide so I think I am ready for the questions now So I'm looking on IRC to see if we have any questions. I don't think I have one yet. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, I think we don't have any questions currently. Thank you very much for your talk. Um, if folks have questions, they can uh, ask you on IRC um, during the rest of the uh, conference today. Um, I know Warner from Netflix wasn't able to join until later in the talk, so he might have some questions for you perhaps. Um, but for now, I think we're gonna go into our first break uh, for the next, uh, about, let's see, let me check the schedule. I think about, I think of a 15 minute break for before our next talk. So let's go ahead and take a break and we'll be back in a little while.